Hi, it's Jessica. It's so great to see you. We are going to be doing a workout today specifically designed for those of you with rectus diastasis, that is separated abdominal muscles. This is also a great workout for those of you who might have a prolapse um, or any kind of pelvic floor issue, incontinence, those kind of things. This workout is very appropriate. So we're going to chat for a few minutes before we get started, but just so you know what I'll be using today is I have a little playground ball or a Pilates ball actually. Um, if you don't, and it's fairly squishy, you'll see. If you don't have one of these, no problem, just have a pillow close, okay? You're gonna use that. Um, and then the other thing, my ball tends to roll away. We'll see how it does. The other thing that I am going to be using is a resistance band. So mine is a tubing with handles. You do not need anything like that, just any kind of TheraBand or resistance band. I like this more than weights to start with um, for this kind of workout. So I would go and purchase one of these if you don't have one. We're gonna go with the light yellow, okay? But let's get started. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about your abdominal muscles first. I think it's really, really important. I know you probably wanna get um, right into the workout, but stay with me here. I think it's really important to understand what's going on um, and why we need a specialized workout, right, when we have this abdominal issue happening. So I'm a physical therapist, I'm a Pilates instructor, I am also a mom, so I have a three-year-old daughter, and I personally have a bladder prolapse from labor. I was in labor for 43 hours um, and pushed for 10 of four of those hours, actually, and then she was pulled out with a vacuum. So all of those things helped lead me to have a bladder prolapse, so that's one issue. Um, I also had a rectus diastasis, and to tell you the truth, I believe that just about 100% of women after giving birth have some form of rectus diastasis. It is that common. Now, the thing is, many women go back before they even realize they have it. And then some women, obviously, they stay. And so this is a workout that's going to be appropriate for just about anyone after birth. Um, of course, check with your doctor. Don't work out until you've been cleared by your doctor. But in general, with rectus diastasis, we put people into, um, after giving birth, we put women into two different categories. So basically, I'll give them workouts from zero to 16 weeks after birth, and then from 16 weeks after that. And so this is a workout that's great for anyone, um, especially in that early phase. But keep in mind, it won't have any crunches, okay? I don't want you doing any, any crunches or any planks for at least four months after giving birth. And I know people might tell you different things, but I believe, again, with my background, that it just is going to make those separated abs worse. So if you can, please wait until four months to do any kind of crunches or any kind of planks, okay? So this workout is specifically meant to help, again, the rectus diastasis and help with the pelvic floor and prolapse issue. All right, so that's my little lesson for you there. Let's get started. We're gonna start seated in a cross-legged position. If that's uncomfortable for you, you can sit in a chair. It is actually much easier though to find your pelvic floor and these muscles that are important when you're seated cross-legged. So that's why I like to have people start here. So what I want you to do is feel both sit bones nice and heavy on the mat. I want you to find your belly button. And then what I want you to do is put your thumbs at your belly button and form a triangle with your hands like so so that your fingers end up at your pubic bone. By the way, this video is not the video to be modest, okay? So if you've had a baby, you're probably not modest anymore, but just so you know, I will be talking about our private parts. I will be having you contract certain things using certain visual cues. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that we're gonna be talking about those things. All right, so find your triangle here. So I want you to think of your lower abdominal muscles as a belt wrapping around your waist and then funneling down into that pubic bone, okay? So these are your low abs we're talking about. Now I just want you to be aware of your pelvic floor as well. Now that's the bowl that's gonna sit between kind of this pubic bone and those sit bones. So you have another triangle, if you can kind of feel that, you have another triangle from sit bones to pubic bone, right? So if you're following me, that kind of makes sense. You have a triangle here, think of that as your lower abdominals. Then you have this triangle that you're sitting on and that's your pelvic floor. So first thing we're gonna do is just breathe, okay? So hands can stay here if they help you or just come onto your knees. Take a big inhale and take a big exhale. Okay, one more, take an inhale. Now on your next exhale, I want you to gently pull your belly button into your spine. That's it, that's all you're gonna do. You can inhale, release, 
Exhale, gently pull belly button into your spine. You are not squeezing your buns. You're not flattening your back. You are not doing anything but just gently pulling the belly button in, almost like you're trying to just pull your belly button away from the shirt that you're wearing, okay? Those are your lower abdominals. Now let's talk pelvic floor. I don't want you to do a Kegel. I want you to throw that, um, that cue of stopping the flow of urine. I want you to forget that, okay? A Kegel exercise is the exercise of strengthening the pelvic floor, but I don't want you to think of that stopping the flow of urine, okay? What I want you to think about instead, here we go with my cues, are you ready? You have a zipper from your vagina to your pubic bone, okay? When you do a Kegel, I want you to zip that zipper. You are zipping a zipper from your vagina to your pubic bone. I know it sounds crazy. It is one of the best ways to actually contract your pelvic floor. So let's do it together. So take an inhale. This time on your exhale, zip the zipper. Feel like you're trying to bring your vagina hole towards your pubic bone. Okay, but you're not doing this pelvic tilt, right? You're not sinking back. You're not actually trying to move the bones. You are just trying to contract those muscles. Now, we're gonna do one more thing. I want you to do both of those at the same time. Okay, so relax, in it. Exhale, bring belly to spine and gently zip that zipper, okay? Pull the pelvic floor up and in. And that's how you find and contract your pelvic floor and the lower abdominal muscles. So that's gonna be your foundation in everything we do in this workout and everything that you do from here on out in your workouts, okay? If you go to a workout class and you're doing squats, I want you to think of that. You're trying to keep that engaged. Again, don't squeeze your butt for dear life. Don't go into this crazy position. You wanna stay tall, you wanna stay nice and long, but you wanna keep that engagement, okay? So now your homework before I move on, that's part of our workout, by the way, but your homework is to work on that and to do two different things. So we're gonna do it together. What I want you to do is I want you to pull belly button in, pull your pelvic floor up, and now hold it 10 seconds. And breathe. We have five more seconds. Four, three, two, one, relax. It's hard, isn't it? Do it again, inhale. Exhale, belly in. Pelvic floor lift. Three, two, one, relax. So your homework is to do those throughout the day, holding them 10 seconds. Now there's another part of that. That's the endurance piece of that muscle. But we also want, um, or that's the longevity piece, being able to hold it a long period of time. We want endurance as well. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna squeeze, 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 squeeze as many times as you can in 10 seconds, okay? So when you're ready, take an inhale. And now go, squeeze, squeeze, lift your pelvic floor, lift, lift, it's so hard for me, lift, lift, lift. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. I know you've probably never done that before. Are you ready? We're gonna do it one more time, inhale. Exhale, go, go, squeeze, squeeze, however many times you can get in, in, you're lifting up, up and in, up and in. Three, two, one, relax. So those are great things to do throughout the day, okay? Again, sitting, preferably here, um, flat, cross-legged. You can do it laying down as well, if that's better for you. Like sometimes, just do them when you think of them, honestly. I'll do them at night before I fall asleep because I've forgotten all day to do them. So I'm laying on my back and that's fine. Laying on your back is gonna be easier. So if this is brand new for you or you're really weak in that area, do it laying on your back to start with, okay? All right, good job, you stuck with me. Let's find your strap. So another great thing to do um, after you've given birth, especially if you're breastfeeding, you're gonna be here, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna help strengthen the abs, but we also wanna get those shoulders back and work on your posture, because I know you're here for separated abs. So what we want is the more we can get strong up here and work on that core, we're gonna help the abdominal muscles come back, okay? So find your strap or your band and bring your arms in front of you. And throughout this exercise, I want you to keep that pelvic floor lifted. And when you're ready, exhale, pull your arms apart and inhale to bring them back. So as you exhale and pull, you're doing your pelvic floor lift. Think of your zipper. You know where it is now, you'll never forget. <laughs> So what I want you to know about abdominal separation is 
We can't make them go back, okay? I'm a physical therapist. I would do it for you if I could, but I cannot push those muscles back together. So what we try to do after birth is keep them from getting worse. We try to keep them from separating more. That's why I don't want you to do a crunch, and that's why I don't want you to do a plank. Because anything that really, really contracts your upper abs, your rectus abdominis, is gonna make them pull apart more if they're already apart. So what you wanna do is give them time to naturally on their own come back together. But to do that, you have to not do the things that pull them apart. I hope that makes sense. So that's why it's important not to do those things. So hopefully see someone if you can. I think it's really important to see a physical therapist. There's some who specialize in women's health and they're amazing. And they'll tell you how wide Let's just do one more of these. They'll tell you how wide that rectus diastasis is. So in general, after the four months, good, take a break. After the four months, if you have less than a two finger separation, then you can start trying some crunches and planks again. It doesn't mean you can never do them. If you still have a two, three, four finger separation, I still don't want you doing crunches or planks. We still have to give them time, okay? But there's lots of other things you can do. Let's bring arms up towards the ceiling. Again, shoulders down. When you're ready, exhale, pull down. The strap's gonna come just right behind my head and back up. So if you are a year or two years, or like me, three years after giving birth, and you came to this video wanting a really hard workout, I know you're not getting one, but you're probably already in an active routine that you like. So what I want you to do is add this once a week and I want you to start thinking of that pelvic floor engagement, okay? I want you to really train them correctly. So I don't want you out there doing all of your crazy jump squats and burpees and all those things we like to do. I don't want you doing those without thinking of that proper pelvic floor and abdominal engagement. All right, let's do two more. Thanks for listening to all my talking today. I'm just so passionate about women understanding that they can do something about this but that knowing there's some things they can do and some things we shouldn't do. We're just never told that. Good, and then rest. I don't know if you were, but I was not. I was not even told prolapse was an option. So when after birth I found this thing down there, I went crazy. I didn't know what it was. We're just not told enough. It's no one's fault, we're just not. So we have to learn for ourselves. All right, set that aside. Let's come on on to all fours. All right, so when you're ready, exhale, round into cat. Inhale, arch. So this is a great way too to work the pelvic floor. When you round here, zip. Zip vagina to pubic bone, zip, zip, zip. Then when you arch, let the zipper undo. Open your sit bones wide, exhale. One more. Good, come halfway in between. Stay here, bring your right arm out in front of you. Bring it back down. Left arm, and back down. Right arm, left arm. One more each side. Just trying to maintain your core engagement. Nice job. Hands down, you're gonna curl your toes under. Lift your knees and just send yourself back to a down dog. So this position is actually really, really nice for the pelvic floor to find some contracting there. I always feel a lift in my pelvic floor when I'm here. You can again contract the abs. You just wanna stay out of the plank position if you're less than four months postpartum. Okay, so for those of you who are over four months postpartum, if you have less than that two finger DR, diastasis rectus, then you can find a plank here. Feel free to come into a plank, hold it for a few seconds, and then go back. But that's the only reason you're allowed, is if you're past four months and you don't have that wide diastasis. diastasis. All right, and let's bring your knees down. Nice job, and just shift your weight back. And then re-stack here. Very nice, all right, let's bring your legs out in front of you. I want you to find the ball and roll down onto your back. All right, so the ball's gonna go in between your knees. Feet flat, pull the belly in, find that pelvic floor lift and engagement, and exhale, squeeze the ball. 
and then inhale release and exhale squeeze and release so inner thigh engagement helps engagement in the lower abs as well so every time you exhale and squeeze do that pelvic floor lift and now when you're ready, on an exhale, curl your tailbone, roll yourself up, squeeze again. Squeeze, one more, and then curl and roll yourself back down. Nice job, let's take that ball out, set it to the side, pull your belly in. Lift the right leg up. This is called tabletop. Keep that belly in and engaged. Left leg up. So the key here is not letting your back arch. Keep the back nice and flat. Lower the right leg down. Tap the ground. Lift. Left leg. Tap. Lift. So your goal is not to let the back arch at all. If this is too much for you, then you're going to do this. Legs start down and you lift one and then the other. Okay, so that's your alternative. Toe dips. One more each side. Nice job. And let's lower one leg, and then lower the other leg. Good. Reach, give yourself a stretch, and then roll onto one side. Push yourself up, that's the key. Anytime you have separated abs, always roll to the side and push yourself up, okay? Never come up to a seated position like you're doing a crunch. Always roll to the side and sit up. Nice job, so that gives you an idea of a great workout to do, again, when you have separated abs. Always check with your doctor, and um, I will talk to you next time. Thanks.